We have a session where we are going to talk about the challenges, about the national film policies and uh, DSM and everything related to it. So I have a pleasure to invite here Edith Zepp, Neil Watson, Julie Jeanne Regnaud, Ria Krove Ribar. Yes, a difficult name. And uh, this session will be moderated again uh, by Scott Roxborough, who started yesterday. Yesterday's uh, uh, session and, and, and the day yesterday, we spent a lot of time talking about the digital single market, particularly its impact from the on um, producers, uh, directors, and distributors. Um, for today's session, uh, we'll shift the focus slightly to take in another aspect of the European film industry that's vitally important, um, which is the, the film funds, the subsidy funds, and the film bodies that regulate, uh, uh, monitor, and guide uh, the film industry in Europe. As you all know, the European film industry is very different than uh, sort of the American um, entrepreneurial model of a film industry. It's a, a public-private mix, um, and the public part of that uh, mix is is vitally important and is what we'll be discussing here. Um, I'm not going to, since we had a lovely pronunciation of the panelists' names, I will not mangle them um, uh, myself, though I'm very good with Neil and, and Edith. Um, uh, but uh, just so you'll have the, the nations properly represented, we are Croatia, France, uh, UK, and Estonia. Uh, it's, it really is Eurovision, and we will be singing at the end of this. Um, <laughs> uh, first, I'd like, though, to start this off. Uh, again, just um, uh, uh, it'll be similar to other sessions. Uh, I'll start it off, we'll get the discussion going, and then um, uh, later on, I'll ask for questions from the audience. So just uh, please, you know, when I ask, just keep uh, your hand out. We'll have a microphone going around. Uh, first, though, I'd like to ask you uh, all, um, uh, the commissioner, uh, Mr. Ansip, spoke this morning uh, addressing the, the DSM and um, in some ways addressing the uh, worries and issues that others have raised in the film industry concerning the DSM. I'd like for each of you, just briefly, your sort of bullet point takeaway from today, uh, from his, his speech. What did you take away from, from uh, what he said today? I mean, the ladies first. Oh, please. Uh. <laughs> please, please, Edith. But I will tell you who <laughs> starts, please. Students have to continue. Uh, yes, uh, it was very interesting, and it was very interesting to see the so how um, vice president has been getting the information and how the information has been evolving over the most probably one and a half years. So, um, if I'm really bluntly, I think it's very good to know that uh, he's listening to us. You know, he's listening and he's actually reading the summaries what we are giving to him, just trying to explain the point of view how the uh, European film should. Uh, should be under the DSM and how it's uh, more uh, author centers on how we can not protect but help our our filmmakers and um, and how we are not against the development or the technology or the new ways of uh, of promoting the films or uh, opening up VOD platforms or changing the release windows. So I think it's uh, for me it was really good to hear that uh, he's listening to us. So a couple of thoughts to add to that. Um, if I had written the title of this session, which I didn't, um, I would have said uh, opportunities as well as challenges. And I think Vice President Ansip set out both some opportunities for us and some big challenges. And I don't think actually we focused enough maybe on the, the opportunities. I think we, particularly as national film agencies, and we work very closely together, I'm proud to say, in the European Film Agency directors group are working very closely and that solidarity is more important than ever at this particular minute. Uh, we share the same ambitions as the Commission in terms of the win-win situation that the Vice President describes. That's a win for the industry and a win for consumers, both of equal importance and, and, and citizens incidentally. It's not only about people as consumers, actually it's Europe is about people as citizens. We share the same objectives. I think we have had obviously some differences of opinion uh, that we've heard from the film industry about how we get there. We want to improve the circulation of works in Europe. You know, we have to do that. 
It, we, we are financing these works as taxpayers. They are incredibly important backbone of cultural diversity. Again, a particularly important thing at this time. It was really refreshing and good to hear the Vice President talk about entrepreneurial freedom, and one could talk about exactly what that means and how that plays out in a, in a digital single market. There are there remain differences of opinion, particularly on the cross-border access issue, as we know. We are, as you know, uh, totally committed to the principle of territoriality, but it's also encouraging to hear the Commission that they absolutely have, which they have reiterated several times now, that they are not pursuing a pan-European uh, licensing model at this point. Um, so I think we're... We need to look at what digital can bring. Um, you know, Estonia is a fantastic example of what it can bring. I, you know, I, everybody that I know who's under 30 in the UK would kill for the chance to vote online. That would massively increase political participation. So there's lots of lessons we can learn from digital societies. We saw a brilliant example of digital creativity just now. So it's not only about the challenges, it's also about the opportunities. How we get there is a complicated thing but let's work on this together and um, through that improve the circulation of European works. Well, um, who could be against uh, circulation and improving circulation and distribution of works? So indeed, we, we share the objectives of the DSM, the digital single market, the strategy. Um, we are not necessarily in line with all the solutions that are proposed, but I was reassured this, uh, this morning, actually, when he said very clearly that it's not about attacking territoriality, so he repeated that very clearly. So I, I took this point. I took also, I note also the, the point about uh, piracy. He was very strong on piracy, which is for us the priority. You cannot have a single market if you don't address that. And we need more pushy initiatives. So we know that uh, they're going to be more ambitious on that, but we, as if I think that we can go even further. So I was happy to hear about uh, piracy. I was happy to hear about a level playing field because it's also about involving uh, these giants into the creation, into, uh, you know, investing in the local creation. So I think he had that in mind. So I would say that the dialogue is functioning well. We think that we, we, we are a bit understood and heard, which is super important because this is how we can continue to work with the Commission. But there are some weaknesses. And for me, for example, we should build on the media program much more. That has been instrumental and in helping a lot because it's all about access. You've been hearing about access, access to online, to legal offers. This is important. And by the way, we are all doing things at national level already for, I would say, years on digital. So access is important, but it's not the, it will not solve everything. Because we, without distribution, without marketing, without promotion, how will you build an audience? Because what we are interested in is having people interested in watching European movies. So how do you attract them? So access is one element. Perhaps we can um, work on that, but we need to think of building the audience with the media program and with a stronger cooperation uh, between the funds. Thank you. Yep. Uh, well, I'm, I'm immensely grateful to organizers and everybody because we had the opportunity really to, to see Mr. Ansip, uh, 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 Vice President of the Commission, and to, to hear you know, his, his speech and the way he, he thinks and the way he understands uh, our profession and the job we are doing. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very often, I think that the central issue of, of the job we are doing is to get this communication done about what, what really film business is and what's our understanding of it. Uh, sometimes we think that we are center of the world, that you know, the, the way we operate, the way we, the things we believe in, you know, the things we were taught at film schools are something that defines us so much that we expect everybody to understand that. But it's not so. You know, when you meet people from business, when you, when you meet people from, from politics, when you meet people who, who have a different model of accountability that we have, then you find some then you meet some differences in, in understanding. And, and so we had this very, very f interesting, uh, re relaxating moments, you know, like coming even with the fact that, that the, the concept of territoriality wouldn't be touched. I mean, we were kindly preparing ourselves for a box match, like the 90% of our energy was going towards the issue of territoriality. And then in another, in another sense, we also, 
remarked, you know, the whole lineup of bugs in, in the misunderstandments of how the, the industry really works in, in Europe. This fantastic thing is dialogue and the fantastic bridge between this, this, this uh, major strategy and our, uh, should I say, operational, not only local but operational position, is a bridge called Program and Media that really gives us a channel, you know, to dialogue. And uh, as Vice President said, he said uh, something very interesting. Uh, uh, he said that the uh, battle for uh, digital single market will be very long and there will be no swift victory. I, I don't believe it necessary it should be the war, but I'm sure that uh, it's a long way. It's really a long way and I hope it will be traced by the house. Hell, I speak like a politician. But you know, it's a long way. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that outlines a lot of the things that we want to talk about uh, today. Um, and um, uh, I hope that in this session also we can talk about concrete proposals and plans and ways forward. Um, but first, I'd like to start with a bit more provocative, because I hope we can fight a little bit today. Um, and uh, I, looking at the European industry now, I think it's broken. Because the models that we've had are falling apart because home entertainment is falling away in every territory. Television sales are falling away in every territory. Cinema's still doing all right. VOD is growing, but is still far too small to compensate for the loss of the other downstream revenues. That seems to me the most significant change in the last years, which is driven by digital. Um, given that, uh, some sort of digital market, digital single market, is a necessity in my opinion, across, across Europe. What do you think needs to be in place to assure that European filmmakers, the European industry can benefit from that, uh, can benefit from this sort of inevitable move towards a, a, a digital uh, e economy uh, for, for, for film? What is missing at the moment and what do we desperately need to have, have, have put in place? What is sort of the, the most urgent matter at the moment? I'll have a go at that, Scott. I mean, I think the, the problems you identify are actually problems that face every single film company in the world at the minute, whether they be in China, Los Angeles, or in Tallinn. You know, and it's across the whole value chain. These are massive problems to which nobody has any easy answers. Uh, they, you know, nobody can predict what's going to happen in probably two years out, let alone five or ten years. So these are enormous problems which the studios, Hollywood studios, much as anywhere else are, are grappling with. My own sense is that, and particularly from a British perspective, is that what's important in Europe to build in the coming years is scale in digital. And we heard the Vice President talk this morning about the importance of scaling up. And actually in film, we don't have that critical mass uh, that we possibly have had in, in the, the past for, in the UK, for example, companies like like Rank, like Polygram, which operated properly on a pan-European scale. And I, so I think there's an interesting question beyond legislative interventions. Uh, what could industrial policy at a European level do to help us build some corporate strength and to build some companies of size? I'm not talking about building a European studio. I think that's probably a chimera uh, in an era of globalization. But I do think perhaps there's some interesting conversations to be had around the European Investment Bank. Uh, and other tools that Europe has at its disposal to see what we could do to really build some companies that are based in Europe, that are managed in Europe, that operate on a pan-European basis, uh, that are built through entrepreneurial freedom in essence, but do improve the circulation of European works. That, that, that would be my opening thought on that. Apart from the big studios producing its uh, distribution, you know, how do you distribute more and more films and what kind of uh, chances you give to these uh, films and different kind of films, you know, that because um, if there is going to be more, uh, you know, more this kind of English language films or certain type of films what are dominating the, the market, then... Uh, then the smaller language groups might just stay behind and there is, a, there is no real plan, you know, how to bring them forward or help them to, to be distributed like, like 
uh, um, Vice President said also Estonian films distributed in Italy. And I think this brings us to the new level of the film, uh, film literature, you know, education in the film. That, you know, maybe one thing is to put money for distribution so that they could uh, spread in Europe. But the other thing is like we have to deal with this kind of uh, receiving and uh, the audience building. And uh, media is doing a great job, but I think there's much, much more what we could do, you know, to, to provoke the audience to think more and, and to want to see different kind of uh, uh, films. So diversity can be built up, you know, it's not only something what um, comes by itself, but it's, uh, it's education. Yeah, it'd be interesting to hear what you think about that, about the most urgent thing um, question. And also, um, if France has any models to offer Europe, because France as a territory is ahead of every everywhere else in Europe when it comes to size of production, exportability of films, um, cinema going, uh, pretty much every every measure, France is always leading leading the tables. Um, uh, and it's a very organized, very detailed film strategy. Um, uh, maybe it's too detailed. Maybe it's it's not a model that fr that the rest of Europe should follow. But is there are there any models uh, that France has that you think are applicable for the really the urgent issues that we're talking about? Well, model would be a, a big word. Uh, indeed, the situation in France is a bit uh, a bit different because we have uh, forty five percent of the market for U.S. movies, the same for national movies, and the rest for the other film industry so we like we think that the more you expose a large diversity of films the more people are interested to have this experience of watching movies so for us the key word is diversity cultural diversity make sure that the films that are produced everywhere can be distributed in france and also that the films that we are doing can find an audience uh, abroad so i mean we've been working on um saving these challenges of digital for uh, before the 2000 uh, i mean 15 years, and uh, what we do in France is supporting and regulating. So we've been creating new schemes so that you are sure that you can digitalize, that you can have uh, content that would be for the web, that you can have also specific online distribution, that we would support uh, the platforms that would emerge. I mean, we are not here as fun to, uh, to, to substitute the market. So I'm not going to tell you we're going to have the European uh, Netflix because we can't. But we can we can support you know the players that are exposing a large diversity of works that are cooperating with the, the authors i'm thinking of eurovod i'm thinking of the cinetech we just launched the cinetech which is a, a tvod service launch no we supported then they launched it tvod platform when you put forward uh, the favorite movies of the, the best filmmakers of the world for the moment it's just national but we hope that progressively you know you build this knowledge you build this attraction through exactly film education, as Neil and Edith said. So there is a mix of doing things in distribution. This is not the case of all the funds, and we are extremely lucky. It's difficult to say lucky uh, today for the, the French uh, people, but we are very lucky in France because we've been, I mean, we dedicate uh, a third of our budget to distribution because we think that it's not enough to focus on having great, wonderful movies, but you need to help them to, to, to find audience, to be promoted in the EU and outside the EU as well. And we want to do this also in cooperation with our partner. So distribution, online adaptation, and also helping, because I'm not sure about the concentration aspect of a platform. I, what I want is actually that I find on an Estonian platform a large variety of, uh, of films, and that my, 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 yeah, the Estonian people can see lots of films. I know it's perhaps a dream, and we, we need a, perhaps to build scale, but I don't precisely know what would be uh, uh, you know, the trade-off of having big, big players um, like that. And also make sure that, that these companies that are, you know, uh, benefiting from this market that is very uh, cine lovers would also contribute a lot to uh, investing in creation. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for the for the very accurate question. You know, because okay, we can say that the models, the traditional models, are kind of dissipating or, or slightly decaying while the new models, which are at place, are not giving the result, at least the financial result that we're expecting. So, Darwinistically saying, we are, getting, we are getting out of water, but still we didn't learn to walk. 
So this is very, very sensitive momentum, like the snake changing skin or a lobster changing the, 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 the armor or something. So it's a bit of a trouble. It's a bit of a risk. Uh, just organically, I think it would be very important not to panic and to take care of the timing, you know, which is first to be done, which is second to be done, which is third to be done. First of all, we have to ask ourselves, are really traditional structures decay, completely decayed and gone just because we are rushing to the future? No. The cinemas are there, you know, the dinosaurs called televisions are there, even with their digital extensions and so on. You know? So, uh, looking at the future, we must just ask ourselves, are we going to... The same question that was asked here before, are the production chain going to be substitute, you know, stimulated with the new models and are the authors going to be remunerated and how? Obviously, if we rush, try, rush trying to do everything at the same time, we got in a kind of blockade and confusion as, as we did, you know, that, that can be sensed, you know, the fear that's around this debate within the last year says that it's so. So, uh, the Germans would say langsam aber sicher, you know, the slow and safe, and hopefully we're going to get out of it. Yeah. And what do you see uh, as the, the key sort of first step? Is it find, you know, setting up some sort of distribution that works? Is it the marketing side to encourage a market to develop for European films? What, what is the sort of first step that you think? Uh, well, I would, I, would, I would propose the approach of illuminated conservative. I would plead for reforms and not, not for revolution. And I would plead for the uh, translation vocabulary between the language of culture and the language of business. Because it's a linguistic problem, it's not a material problem. Uh, it's the same thing. The film industry in Europe is culture that makes revenue. It's, it's the cultural activity that's able to pay its bills. So it's fine. Only we must adjust the language that we are using, you know. Are we talking market and profit, or are we talking public and reach? Are we talking uh, visibility and participation, or we are talking sales and, and uh, uh, whatever, and, and that kind of economic revenue, you know. These differences are, are substantial. I think that we should consolidate what we had and what we've been developing, we've been very slow in developing that. We've been, uh, we spent like 15, 20 years trying to develop, uh, trying to follow one dim idea of, of European cinema, gained through European distribution, European film award, European film promotion, European production, co-production fund called Eurimage, and these uh, fantastic ideas of, of program media, of this now sub-program of Creative Europe, you know, but I think first we, we must consolidate the past and then make a step into future, which means more, more efficient education, more trans-border uh, uh, trans coordination in the efforts of, to educate, more of promotion, system, more systematic approach to cinemas, the, the stronger and bigger European film award, and then the digital extension to all of these initiatives. And then we can face, you know, like the big players and say, look, this is what we have to offer, what we may offer to you and what we can embrace for your big business models. That would be my little boy dream about how the future should look like. Yeah, the question I ask myself is when this digital uh, model will begin to be sustainable and make money. I mean, this is also the care issue because we can, you can push the, 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 dis the online distribution, but if actually you just get 500 euros a year. I mean, there is an issue of transparency. There is an issue here on remuneration that, you know, everything. That's why you, when you say, tell me what you would do, I would say there is a combination of, of measures and initiatives to take. Uh, for sure, not reforming copyright and not weakening copyright, but lots of other sh things that really could make a difference. Yeah, I mean, maybe pick, pick up on that, because uh, one of the big issues uh, is remuneration, of course. Um, Netflix was mentioned uh, several times. They have a different model. They have a fee-based model. They pay uh, the film owners or the rights holders one time, 
and then it's theirs, and, and so it just straight up uh, pay off. So there's no down the line remuneration for that, and they are completely secretive about what happens with the films. That to me doesn't seem like a problematic model as long as they're paying enough, um, but uh, could be perhaps be discussed. The other model that we've seen for um, entertainment uh, commodities uh, is something like the Spotify model, uh, which there is a remuneration, but very, very, very small for, for, for the creatives. Um, how, what, you know, wh where do you see the solution for the remuneration on, on the VOD model? Is there a model in Europe that's working for that, that's actually providing remuneration? Uh, um, that's satisfying uh, 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 the creatives or the, or, or the rights holders? Or is everyone feeling that they're getting screwed? Again, Scott, with, with respect, I don't think it's just a European issue. This is a global issue about the transition from analog pounds to digital pennies, as the cliche goes. And, you know, the film industry is, is globally wrestling with this. I think the... the I think what's interesting about film is actually it's been somewhat smarter than music. We saw what happened to music with Napsterization, and you know that was a disaster for the music industry. Uh, they have gradually managed to rebuild revenue streams, albeit it's uh, you know the, the volume in relation to the revenue you get back, as you say, uh, is is nothing like it was in the, the magic age of CD. And we're seeing the same with DVD. These are very, very tough questions. And what role public policy and national film bodies have in addressing them is, is hard to see. There's lots of experiments going on. So uh, Julie Jeanne and the CNC have a fantastic thing about uh, finding films. It's, uh, the issue of dis accessibility and discoverability is, is very important in all this. But my, my strong suspicion is there'll be a lot of trial and error before we get to what is a sustainable model um, in in the digital age for film, exactly as we've seen for music. I mean, if, if we had been sitting here five years ago, I suspect lots of people in this room would have thought the future lied in download to own. Well, it turns out it doesn't. It lies in SVOD, or for the minute it does. So these are very, very complicated questions that we're, that we're wrestling with. And the thing is to get a public policy that is fit, sufficiently flexible and fit for purpose that doesn't stifle innovation, but also we don't just rest on our laurels because we can't do that because otherwise we see the consequences of that. The Americans are operating at scale, they're operating platforms of scale, and the real danger is we get left behind in that. I think it's also the cinemas, you know, we still have the cinema revenue, and I don't think it's today, as I understood, you know, we're thinking of the cinemas as disappearing somewhere. Well, it's not also, also digitalizing, and it gets, and people actually go back to the cinemas. You know, we have a, in Estonia, we had 300,000 uh, admissions this year for Estonian films. You know, they're not disappearing anywhere. So I think uh, we should also see it as a balance, you know, between the online platforms and cinemas. And, you know, the new is uh, sort of like merging with the old. And, uh, and the old is not, not disappearing, but just becoming digitalized. So. Um, uh, can I propose something? Uh, um, there's one thing I've always wondered about when it comes to European films outside their home, home territories is that there doesn't seem to be a proper commercial circuit to distribute a lot of European films. Some get picked up, and France is a great example, bringing in a lot of European films. Some have a chance. Um, but Europe has an incredible, long-running circuit of film festivals. Uh, why isn't that uh, established as a, as a sort of circuit? I mean, we've seen what's happened in the music business, that they've, their model has shifted from uh, releasing a record as promotion for a money-making tour. Um, with uh, a cinema, uh, perhaps the uh, way to have a market and stimulate a market is to go where people want to see European films, which is in the festival circuit, and properly do that as a, as a revenue-generating system, perhaps with distributors that could link up you know, or, or a producer that will take their film around and really generate revenue uh, almost as like a, a proper tour. Is that even being considered? Is something like that being suggested? As opposed to the system now where distributors in most territories do not want to take up European film because the risk is too high and there's not an, they don't have a guaranteed audience for it. 
Well, well no. Uh, no, because I was thinking in France, actually, the, the, you still have the value of the, of the film made in theaters, and people go see European films in theaters. I mean, the Not French the audience. I so for us, the, the festival value. is less the place where you will build the audience, because they are really... Um, I mean, we offer a large diversity, which makes it that you love seeing a U.S. blockbuster than the day after seeing a very independent Danish movie. So, um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how I would, uh, I would answer, answer your question about, like, the festivals and how they could... Uh, because I don't see that fitting for the, for the French example. Well, however, th th uh, th there, there, is, there is one good point on, on this... Uh, new energy and that comes mostly out of fear that gets along this uh, digital single market debate that like the European cinema is waking up a little bit like European film promotion has a very serious concept of promoting you know a European set of European films in in states like uh, along uh, uh, European film market these things are insignificantly little by now but they, they show the goodwill you know that something that something is going to be developed in, in the future if your question was going to that, why don't we do something more systematically to clusterize our approach to the uh, to the outside? Out, well, so, but you should define what does it mean outside of outside of Europe, because you know the the the, the, the planet maybe you mean you mean you mean outside of home territories? Okay. Yeah. Danish, you know, the yeah, Danish yeah, market, yeah, go to the German yeah, market, yeah, go to the Croatian yeah, market, yeah, and look yeah, at the top 100 yeah, yeah, films yeah. last year in the various territories, yeah. and it's a struggle to find any non-local, non-American films in the top 100, mm -hmm. you know, in everywhere, also in France. I mean, Ida was named as an example yesterday. That was the 97th. Well, but e look, look, but e like but neither Ida, ne no, sorry, you don't have a mic, no. I have a mic, you speak with Terry, yeah, that's... The, I'm just the, saying, isn't that the key issue? Is developing, is growing the demand for European okay. cinema, and how is that done? How how practically is that done? So to translate it in simple word, simple words, you know, you you ask us why don't we produce pan-European hits? I didn't say that. <laughs> because because the art film travel, but they travel in the art circuits, and they don't appear in top ten figures or they don't appear in a, in a big statistics or in the big percentages. Because very few people see them. So, I mean, well, okay, the, those who see them, see them. I mean, the, the circulation of books or, or of theatrical, you know, the performances, I mean, of, of the classical theater is by, any, by all means lesser than the circulation of, of films, you know. We omitted one uh, uh, simple thing. The Benoit yesterday was giving the case study of Ida, you know, how it traveled to prove how efficient this multi-territorial thing is, how does it look like when a film travels, uses one territory by territory, you know, so, so to, to congregate the, uh, the effect. Very good. We just didn't omit one element concerning Eva, I, uh, Ida. Ida is masterpiece. So it also, the, this production system was able to make a master, masterpiece in very conservative terms. It's the film that appears once in a two, three, four, five years on the planet. It's a masterpiece, the classical film. You know. So I think the, the, the major value of Ida is that it's going to last and it's going to be the part of the history that, that's, that's to come. You know. So I'm, I'm, I shifted to another, uh, to another field, but I think that uh, we, we don't uh, deploy, maybe this is our local uh, position, we, we, we see the increase of penetration of like Croatian film. I come from Croatia, the, the small country in the Adriatic coast. And the increase of the penetration of Croatian film in, in the international market is such, looking from the zero point that we started from several years ago, that we really do not deplore our, our presence on the, on, the, on the global scale. Um, maybe open up to the, uh, to the audience. If anyone has any questions, just please put your hand up. Um, I think we have a mic at some somewhere at some point. Yeah, have any questions for the panel? I have no problem continuing, but uh, no. All right. Yeah, please, please. So I think the other thing that's incredibly important here um, is actually the film literacy uh, issue, which has been touched on. And just so people know, 
the EFADS has set up a film literacy working group, which will be chaired by the British Film Institute, which will meet for the first time in London in December um, in, a, in a couple of weeks time and colleagues are all involved with that. And so the film literacy is about <laughs> developing and enhancing cultural diversity, I think. And if you start from the premise that cinema is about seeing the world through the eyes of other people, that's an incredibly important thing right now, particularly in Europe. And we think that young people in particular, our ability to show them that taste doesn't have to be homogenized, that there are all sorts of different ways of looking at the world in a civilized, cultural fashion across Europe, but there are also some common values that underlie that. We think that's incredibly important. I read a quote recently, and I'm slightly paraphrasing from Christopher Nolan, who said something like, nobody watches Jean-Luc Godard movies age 10. There, there is a point of intervention, though, where people start to become very interested in different ways of looking at the world, become much more interested in what independent cinema, which is the backbone of European cinema, represents. And I would suggest that somewhere, particularly in the teenage years, maybe in the later teenage years. What we want to do through the Film Literacy Working Group is to work through, and again with the Commission and working closely with Creative Europe, to think about how we can open particularly young people's eyes to the richness and the variety of cinema that is out there and thereby ultimately increase, uh, whether that be cinema admissions or the people watching on SVOD or whatever, that they are watching a wider diversity of film and we are increasing the market share of European film in, in its home territories. The other thing I would say, Scott, is that some of the examples you gave, I would actually beg to differ. I, you know, I think, for example, in Denmark, uh, thanks to some quite innovative and creative policies over many, many years, and it's true of some other Scandinavian countries, including Sweden, the domestic share is is relatively healthy um, for, yeah, local yeah, for, for local movies. I accept there's a non-national problem. Maybe also here is a good point to, uh, to bring out that the, the responsibility of the National Film Fund is to uh, nurture the talent. You know, not all the films what we are producing um, I don't know, but I, I have a feeling maybe not all of them have to travel. We are not doing all the films for audience. You know, there is still a film language and the culture what we have to take care of. You know, there is a certain kind of films. Estonian music and Estonian literature, Estonian word is, um, is creating. And there is only one kind of Estonian film what can be produced from this music and from this literature. So we are also responsible that the film is not dying out and it's reflecting the Estonian culture. And sometimes these films don't travel. And this is not the aim or this is not the responsibility of the National Film Funds in my mind. So we have to do obviously the films for audience, you know, so that they can enjoy in Estonia and outside Estonia. Do, you, do Would you then welcome a separation from, because we're talking here almost of two different things. We're talking about... Um, uh, local art house movies, essentially, that are not conceived con commercially, that are mostly subsidized, um, and that almost none of them get their money back, except for, for masterpieces that, that manage to travel, which is a small number. And on the other side, we're talking about commercial, pro commercially produced films, um, most of them coming from France, uh, if we're honest, as some, some, some English um, in general, that work in their home market, make a lot of money back, and are very successful traveling, looking through the list of uh, non of European films that have made it to other territories and that have been commercially successful. They're almost all in English language, though the bulk of them are actually French produced, they're Lucy, nonstop, and so forth. Um, should we separate those two debates? Should we say a structure for commercial films and that, you know, as a business, and another structure for artistic diversity, for the cultural worth um, that has nothing to do and should not even be considering in, in interacting with the commercial sphere? Well, perhaps commenting on, on, on a couple of concrete examples of things that, that we are doing, uh, um, apart from helping the marketing, the promotion and the subtitling, which is already something and that helps a lot. Co-production helps. So 46% uh, of our production is co-produced. 
So it helps to have sales in different countries. So promoting that, we do it a lot and we want to, to, it, to do it more. Uh, it's also about developing the spirit of what we call export. So we have a huge strategy to, to promote from the very beginning, from the development phase, the idea that actually your project should find uh, partners or should find distributors, sailors in other countries. We don't want to interfere with the creation, the authors, but still like uh, thinking from the very beginning of this strategy of travel, uh, necessity of traveling for, for the film. And I'm thinking also of the, the role of broadcasters because you, you know that we have regulation at European level so that you expose 50% of European films. Uh, on, on TV, so perhaps we could think of ways to expose even more the non-national European films in the other public uh, public TV, so that you get a bit uh, acquainted with what it is to to see something else than just uh, uh, US movies. So uh, yeah, this was a bit, and also just another another thing that we are changing is about the language. We start to think. Well, I, I'm speaking English, but this is already a big effort for me. No, I mean, the language is super important. And this was a bit uh, something that we, we, we are very attached to, very linked to. And now we start to move a bit so that we can help also uh, the movies that are not necessarily uh, uh, done in French. Uh, so, yes, and this is also a guarantee of, of traveling more for, for the movie. <laughs> True enough. It didn't didn't seem to need need too much support. Um, let's say there's various other other uh, things to cover. I would like to go back to one more time to remuneration because at the beginning of yesterday's session, Lord Putnam gave a video address where he went through various points. One aspect I felt very interesting is he was saying the opportunity that these big tech companies could provide the big tech companies. Most of them. Are, all of them are American at the moment, Amazon, Netflix, Apple, who are coming in and dominating the market. He saw an opportunity there by saying, if we can get them involved in the financing of, 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 of films. It's done on the television side in a lot of European territories where TV has, has to provide a portion of their profit or revenue to, to the financing of films. Is that something that should be pushed for, a model that should be pushed for for the, for the, the tech companies? Do you think there's any, uh, any hope of getting Netflix to, to agree to something like that or Amazon to agree to something like that? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the problem is that arithmetic just doesn't hold. You know? and, and that's, we, we created the funding model, sorry, in Europe. Uh, so including, financially including, the local gatekeepers of the global repertoire to participate in funding. And by, by the mercy of good God, you cannot imagine the model which will make the global players participate in production on a local level. It's, it's impossible. Okay, well... well even for France, maybe there is some hope for France because it has 70 million inhabitants. The point is that the business model of Netflix is based on the, the secret of success is its global penetration. It has the global penetration, so it can offer like $5 per user. And like with, with, if, he, if Netflix covers, theoretically, a country like Estonia with $5 per user, and in Estonia it's going to be like... $200,000 per user, and if it substitutes thus the, the, the whole chain of other, you know, uh, services like television, you know, uh, uh, on local on-demand videos, and so in everything got, at the end of the day, reduced to 200 subscriptions by $5, what can you do with this money? What can you do with this money? So... No, it makes so, hundred, so many million in Europe, of course, because that has to go to like a media fund that supports European production, which can be a whole different thing. So you just European films yeah, you know, but media, yeah, but 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 media has not has not resources. The the, the, the people for media here, the media can't run around the local territories and look 
and look for the projects in the developing phases in in this in this in this in this way. That's the technical problem of of the big of the big size and the small size. You know, we need a stairway from from the bottom to the attic. My name is Elizabeth Schosser, I'm a Norwegian filmmaker, and Netflix was uh, established in Norway very early on as one of the first European countries. And it was also a very innovative move when they decided to co-fund uh, Lilyhammer, the TV series, with the uh, national broadcaster. So this, there's actually an example of this happening, and I think that we do uh, want... Uh, the, I mean, if you look at... They come in at the national level, they take a lot of... Uh, a big market share, and they're getting, I mean, the, the percentage of Norwegian households that subscribes to Netflix is huge. But I think, so I do think it's important that they come into the value chain and also contribute to financing. And that there is uh, the Article 13 of the AVMS Directive that allows us to um, mandate this kind of investment obligations. And I think that as we're now seeing that uh, this, when this market matures and the players mature, they see that their best competitive asset is to go into original programming and to invest in, in original content. And I think this is really something we should help them get properly into by actually imposing these investment obligations. And there's also a correlation between having invested and then promoting. Uh, just again on the Norwegian small basis, you see that uh, the players that are out there have zero um, percent of their programming budget going into national and European films for 2014. This is simply not sustainable. They're just promoting non-European, mostly American content, and that's you know that's a missed opportunity. So I think that we really need to uh, set that so there's some minimum <laughs> uh, scales of what they should have on their platforms, catering to a national audience. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you very much for raising that. Just on, on, on the platform, three points. Participation in the creation or in the financing. We have two cases, so it's, I would say, in the hand of the Commission. I don't know if the Commission is still here, because Germany and France are asking for that. Netflix is not established in France, which is totally fine. They have, they operate, but they have, I mean, a huge marketing. They have subscribers from France, and they, they I mean, they can take advantage of our, our market without contributing at all, which is exactly the same case as for Germany, because they are based somewhere else. And we think this is totally unfair competition. So if they use the market, the audience, they should also contribute. We welcome the fact that they are known that they will produce a series, which is Marseille, which is great. We hope that there will be more of local production. This is already something. But they should, I mean, contribute to the, to the global pot that would be redistributed to the creation. And by the way, not only French creation, because we support not only French, uh, French uh, uh, creation, but the other point is not only contribution to the creation, is also make sure that you don't have 95% of US uh, content on Netflix, which is not the case. I'm exa exaggerating. You have 17% of French uh, products, uh, content, uh, works, I don't know, uh, on the French Netflix, which is not enough. Because for the other platforms, the, uh, the requirements are much higher. So you should at least play the same with the same rules. So promote, expose more European works. And not only have them in your catalog, but also prominence, I mean, propose them, give them visibility and marketing and, and promotion. So these are three axes really contributing to having quantitative uh, exposure and also qualitative exposure to the European works. Hi, I'm Charlie Bloy I, uh, from Film Export UK. I, I spoke on a panel earlier today. I, I've got a comment and a question. The, the comment is just to say, if we can all remember that English is a European language and uh, it, there's a danger of using it as a synonym for America um, when, you know, uh, there are, uh, it's become a uh, lingua franca and, and not necessarily everybody likes that, but it is a, a European language. My question is about independence. Um, I'm a great supporter and believer in independent film financing, but we're looking at a potential future in which um, film financing relies more and more on state funds such as yourselves. Um, is that a threat to independence in a political and cultural way? I think... Uh, is that one working? Yeah. yeah. I think that's a very, very interesting question, Charlie. I think we are obviously in an age of austerity, as we will newly discover in the UK next week when we have a very tough spending round being announced. These are very challenging times 
for public funding, and I think it's therefore even more important that our policies for funding and support for film are absolutely optimal, and we think really hard about where we intervene in the value chain precisely to support the kind of independent cinema that you, your members, represent in the, those kind of independent companies. And we're going to have to do some really hard thinking, certainly in the UK, about that. And clearly, you know, the same kind of pressure, fiscal pressures are operating against uh, across Europe. I would hate to think that in the light of perhaps greater reliance on, on public funding, that that brought forth some kind of political intervention uh, in, in terms of cinema. I think what's incredibly important about all the bodies in EFADs is that we are effectively at arm's length from governments and certainly in terms of the decision-making processes and that that uh, independence and a creative independence is incredibly important going forward that we are not become political pawns uh, simply because there's greater reliance on public funding or because there's less public funding available. I mean, one issue that was addressed yesterday but we haven't talked about so far now is is there any role or what role can uh, private equity play? It uh, plays a very small role in Europe at the moment when it comes to film financing. We heard some of the reasons for that yesterday at the equi on the equity panel. There was some talk, though, about saying you have this amazing source of public funding in Europe. Can that be leveraged in some way together with equity to be more effective in producing and distributing marketing uh, films? What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Depends uh, on the size of the market, I suppose. You know, in Estonia, it's extremely hard. So we only start the work on with a with a private investment just to try to convince the investors that um, maybe there are films around where they should uh, invest. So it's it's very problematic when it comes to the size of the market. So in Estonia, we are facing huge problems with that. <laughs> yeah, we, we have what we call a SOFICA in, in France, so these are financial institutions that uh, invest uh, uh, in, in, in the production, they, 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 they take uh, savings, it's very risky investment, but it works, and, uh, and they are investing in, uh, in lots of, of, uh, of co-production or, or um, national works, so what I don't know is whether this system could be could be also could work in the other country. I think it's close to the tax shelter because you have a kind of tax incentive. Is as an, an individual you would invest in a Sofika that would then, you know, uh, invest in a, in a movie. So um, yes, perhaps we explore uh, at a broader scale what could be done on crowdfunding. We discussed very quickly uh, uh, yesterday. Interesting, but still very marginal uh, impact uh, and um, for, for the project that we are supporting, not necessarily uh, fit for purpose for the moment. Yeah, just, just to add shortly, now you've been mentioning uh, 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 films from, from uh, Europa Corps, you know, you've been talking, and, and then, okay, James Bond is a European film in these terms, you know, so, so, so of course made by, yeah, of course made by US studios, no, but then Rick McCallum is doing very, like, like uh, John, John, John Dorman, Borgias, you know. So there are some very creative people, Ben Besson in the first place, you know. There's some very creative people combining, you know, the, the, the public sources in Europe, the European way of making film and, and, and the equity funds in Europe and Hollywood studios. So the, this controversy, transatlantic controversy, is not so huge, you know, and with advancement of time, with advancement of technology, there's some very handy very handy filmmakers, you know, making one specific kind of film, when, when, you know, films that are very good, commercially very good, and they're very able. And somehow, I, I, I know something about them because they've been in business with us in creation or throughout the rebate model, and I really like the way they, they think. I think this is one niche that, that could have a perspective. I only have a feeling that we need really to, to, to put an end to this, uh, too many questions. Uh, and, 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 and to, to put an end to the debate about what's our future going to be. Shall we sell out our market to someone or not? Are we going to close down the way we are financing films or not? We are a little bit undecisive, you know. I have a feeling somehow that once we, we get even with what we really want, that, that kind of development, we'll see much more of that, you know. And the bigger we become, we, we will be surprised how fast the so-called hard money will pip in the, the European film. Build it and they will come. Um, is, uh, is, do we have any other questions? I think we have time for one last question. Otherwise, yeah? 
Real quick. It's, it's not a question. It's just saying that there is there is a model. We are working in Luxembourg. We're coming from a very tiny, so I'm really interested in all the, the questions. First of all, we are a very tiny market, so we invest more or less 30 million euro in European co-productions. Um, 70% is co-productions, minoritarian co-productions, and 30% goes into local productions where we tell our stories, history-wise, documentary-wise, which, which is really not products that go on a big market. But we are working now and we are thinking very actively, two or three people in Luxembourg together with our government on a venture capital fund, based, of course, on the experience that Sofika um, the Sofikas in, in France. The first thing we know and what we found out, because we are working on that since two or three years, we want to have um, venture capital that will be invested in European quality films. We want to not only invest in production, we also want this venture capital fund to invest in development of projects. So really from the first moment on and not only uh, in the last 20%, because basically we, we find quite easily uh, 70 to 80% on, on, the, on the public market, let's call it like that, public money, and it's always the last 20% or those percentage that gives us the reason to control also then the return on our films, because uh, we also want to have in this, in this panel, on the, in this venture capital fund, we want to have specialists from Europe in all the fields, development, distribution as well, and, and production. And of course, we need, and that's something we found out, we need for the moment a certain incentive, and we are asking it from our government, like this 30%, in the beginning at least, to make, to show how it works and to, let's say, put these kind of investors a little bit more at ease that we have this 30% return. So for 100 uh, euro invested in this venture capital fund, they would immediately can deduct 30% from taxes. And afterwards, uh, they have the risk is only 70. So that's one thing. And the second thing is really to go away to, to tell all these investors that we are not offering 20 and 30%. We have to change investment capital in films, it's really a little bit different. There, there, there needs to be a mix, in my opinion, like, like going in this, to, to, in this sexy business, but not necessarily to double or triple uh, the investment that you give, if well, you know I what think I mean. That's quite positive uh, a start in that aspect, and there's a lot to talk about, but I hope that we've, uh, we end with a, a slightly positive note. Um, uh, it seems, I think I can speak with everyone saying that the digital market is coming, it's, it's already here, and it's, it's unavoidable. Um, and from my experience, uh, with speaking with people in the European film industry, they are actually remarkably creative, innovative, and and adaptable, uh, despite uh, uh, rumors to the contrary. Uh, so I, for one, am quite hopeful, and I hope you uh, you folks are too, especially after this after this session. Thank you very very much. Please applause uh, applause for the panel. <laughs>